Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whatever time zone you may be in. This is Off the Grid Podcast with Aiden and Jared. You know, off the walk is test to the truth. <laughs> uh, almost uh, had an issue there. Uh, <laughs> that was a, you were going off the rails there for a second, oh, man. but yeah, I think you recovered okay. Um, I guess good foreshadowing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, um, welcome it, to the new year, guys. Yeah, uh, happy new year to everyone. Hopefully, everyone had a, a very a merry Christmas. Yes, and, I know. Uh, I should know. I did. Good. Yeah, Aiden, what did you get? You were talking about your. Uh, you got a gun for Christmas. Yes, yes. Oh, I cannot wait to just modify it. It's gonna be a joy. Oh yeah, it's a little twenty two rifle. So nice, it's awesome. Um, yeah. So I had a really good Christmas. Got a lot of good stuff. Um, yeah. And, uh, but also I was, you know, before we got on tonight, I was also, this has been on my mind during yes, our, our break from podcasting and whatnot. This is something that you want, did we want to tell them too? Let them know what's going on? Or well, just like the, the basics to okay, it. Yeah, let's um, do it. You know. I, so we, me and Joe were talking about this earlier before, yeah. the, before we started tonight. And, and we were also talking about like, um, like for this year, like what we want to yeah. accomplish with our podcast, just our, just our game plan, basically what we want to do, what we want to try to do. Yeah, and and what we're trying to accomplish, and and I'm going to try to hold myself to it this year. I know I say, Same. I Me too. you know it's just like New Year's resolutions; they never seem to like hold. But I'm going to try this time to really hold myself accountable, put our foot, put our foot down, and yeah, and just say, yeah. you know, let's do it. Yeah. So, and what I'm referring to here is the fact that. We need to put all of our concentration on our content. Yeah. And not only just our podcast, but our gaming channel. Yeah. And that's something that... We've been slipping up on that a lot. Well, not slipping up, but yeah. we've taken a long hiatus on that. And I think a long enough hiatus to be... Right. And portfolio. the reason why we've took that hiatus, and I think we've explained it in a previous uh, podcast or radio show... Or whatever, yeah. We've never had the gear to do it. We never had the gear to do it, and we were really like we can in our the mics to talk to yeah. each other and talk to the game capture car and all that stuff. So the the whole idea was in its infancy. Yeah, um, and it was know, good on paper at the time. Yeah, and it's something that we were really interested in and still are. But the problem is, it was getting too much, and it was seemed like every time we started up the game and we're like, all right, let's go. Something would go on. And it was like, we could not have any fun. Yeah. It was like one thing after another. always stress in the back of our mind, like, is this going to crash? Is something going to go on? Yeah, Yeah. we've had it crash multiple times. But, like we've been saying before, this board has changed our lives. Yeah. Like, seriously, I I think it's the best investment we've ever ever made. Yeah. I mean, it really has. I mean, yeah, it's it, called the Roadcaster Pro. In case you guys want to get it, um, I mean, you, you you can see it on our TikTok account because yeah. we've shown it on camera before on there. But like, I can't pick it up now. That would mess up the yeah. cords or whatever. Um, but yeah, definitely a good investment for anyone that is like a podcaster and stuff. It's a bit pricey. Yeah. Um, but well, we actually got it in a bundle, right, Jude? Yeah, I got it in a bundle. It was still pricey, but it was worth it. Yeah, you know, because it's something like that we're going to use for years to come. Mm -hmm. And not only just for our podcast, but for our gaming channel. Um, Because we still got, it'll just connect to my computer, boom, we're good. Yes. Um, So anyways, announcements on our our content. We are going to start going back to our gaming channel. We're going to start having some fun again with that. Yes. Um, We plan on doing some overnight stuff in the future. Yes, and to de-stress too. Yeah, because I I don't know if... This is this way with you, Joe, but I tend to find, after a lot of our political podcasts, it's have anxiety. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah. It, so it's going to be nice to just, like, not that it's bad to talk about, obviously, but yeah. just to de-stress, de, um, like, just de-stress and just, you know, have fun right. again. Because it does get taxing, guys, like, trying to find news stories and... You know, content to talk about. And, and then you hear about the same crap yeah. over and over again every yep. time you listen to political stuff. I, whether you know, it's I, or whether it's CNN on the other side of it. Like, or, I enjoy listening to my political podcasts yeah, and yeah. whatnot, but... Yeah. It gets also, old sometimes. Yeah, like, I take a break on Saturday and Sunday from it. So yep. I have at yep. least two days a week where I'm staying, trying to stay away at least from the political stuff. Yes. And I think the same thing should apply... 
for our podcasts and stuff. We need to take a break from our podcast and do our gaming videos. Yeah. And also with our gaming videos, we plan on going away from the pre-recorded stuff. Doing live streams. Yeah, and... Because um, that saves us at any time, and it also allows interaction with you guys. Yeah. That's what I thought of just now, actually. Sorry, I'm but moving no, that a little good. bit. It was a little bright. Um, um, yeah, yeah, like... I didn't think about that, actually. Doing live streams actually allows for more um, interactive like, yeah. comments and stuff. And it's it's easier because I don't have to worry about okay not near as much editing like I, actually basically none actually yeah the only thing I'm gonna do is probably slap um a logo in there. oh our logo and our intro on it yeah um and then that'll be it I mean other That's than literally, literally it yeah and then just post it to our YouTube um. Yeah. Yeah. So th- that's kind of yeah. where we are, and hopefully you guys let we'll us know in the that, comments yeah. what you what you guys think. And we have some ideas for an actual logo too, because like, I'm sorry, but the old one sucks. Yeah. It's, like it's uh, not even related to gaming at all. I'm not sure why we stuck with it for as yeah. long as we did, but we are going through a rebrand right yes. now. So stay tuned for that. We should be uh, we should have our first live stream um, this month. Yeah. Um, Sometime this month, we'll keep you guys updated, or uh, at least try to. Yeah. We'll try to keep you updated. So, plan on getting that out here um, in the following week. Yeah. Uh, but also, um, before we get into our topic tonight, which we're going to be talking about mass psychosis and mental health. Yeah. Um, mental health generally. Um, yeah. But mass we'll psychosis just... is then devolving into mental health in general as a, yeah. a lead-in, but... Uh, before we get into that, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast if you haven't already. Our podcast is available on YouTube, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. We also have a TikTok account where we post short clips from our podcast that you may have missed. We also have our radio station on the Xeno Radio app called WOTG, where we have our podcast playing 24-7. We also go live on WOTG every so often, so... Uh, it's called uh, OTG Headlines, if you haven't listened to it. Yeah. Uh, where we discuss various events that have been clogging the headlines over the past week. week. Not clogging the toilet. Which, if <laughs> we had been doing that tonight, I would have mentioned, guys, I'm just going to say this right now. This is all I say about it. You know what's going on. If you, unless you've been on a walk, please, guys, let's play for Demar Hamilton. I mean, ha- Hamlin, I'm sorry. Demar Hamlin, because yeah. it's awful. It's what's happened. It's I've never seen this in all the years I've been watching sports. I've never seen something like this ever. I don't think anyone has. It's so rare. Like, yeah, you know that that if you, you guys are watch, if you guys were watching it, basically what happened just real quick is basically he was doing it was the first quarter and they were playing Cincinnati. Buffalo was playing Cincinnati, and the dude I don't remember who it was that hit Demar, but he hit him right, mm-hmm. right in the chest. Everything seemed to be fine. Gets up. Like a millisecond later, he just falls, like, right on his back. They give him CPR, and then eventually an ambulance has to come out and take him to mm. a hospital in Cincinnati where he is still in the ICU and on a ventilator. Wow. From my, from my most recent knowledge, from what I've heard. Yep. So, thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family. Yeah. Hopefully he makes a full recovery Absolutely. and speedy recovery. Yes. Um. Just to put the nail in the coffin now, I um, I think it was something to do with his um, him getting hit at the right time. Mm. Honestly, yep. Because if we we watched the video, there was a doctor explaining how it happens. Yeah, and you know, it's just it makes sense when he explained it the way he did that. It's like it it has to happen at a specific millisecond. I mean, that's how rare it was that in the transition is. between the. T- the heart's different electrical cycles. Yeah. That's when it happens. Which is like he when said, it's a millisecond it yeah. difference. Yeah. So that's why it's so rare because, you know, if you got hit in the chest at any other time, you would most likely be fine. Right. You yeah. know, but it was just, I don't know how it happened, but just, it's a freak accident. That's yeah. It happened. So, yeah. Hopefully, uh, he makes a speedy recovery and, yes. um, you know, whether he decides to play football again, that's completely up to him. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to tell him, you know, that he shouldn't, but... That would scare me away, though, to be honest. But if he's I mean, if if he's perfectly fine, there's no issues lingering after this, no then they no heart condition, yeah. then, you know, by all means, Go you know, if it. that's... You know, he's only 24 years old, 
you know, so I can only imagine like, you know, your career ending at 24 years old, like that's devastating for yeah. anyone, especially for a young athlete he like himself. Fi- he probably has a lot of fire in him still. Yeah, I mean, you you didn't get to this point in your life just because you were lazy. No, you, I mean, you, you had worked your butt off. You worked your butt off through middle school, high school, and then college, and then you're like, well, am I going to have a chance at the pros? And sure enough, you get drafted. Yeah. And then you're like, man, I'm making the big mo- uh, the big money now. And it's been on Monday Night Football, no less. Yeah, where millions of people tune in every time. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, I can understand why someone would not want to give up their position when they work so hard to get there. Yeah. So, but hopefully, whatever decision he makes will be the right one. Yes. Um. You know, presuming he makes it out of this, praying that he does. Yes. Um. But yeah, so just wanted to touch on that real quick, and those yeah. glad you brought it up, Aiden. Yeah. Um. But yeah, let's get into uh, tonight's the, topic. The, the actual hand. topic, yes. Yeah. Let's let me get out of this though. Because this this computer's been giving us a little bit of an attitude tonight. Yeah, it's like I'm trying to move trying screens to switch pages, over, and it's like, can you switch, please? Like, come on to, now. I'm about ready to start printing out all of our notes. <laughs> I got a stack like, of paper. It's just like, e. That's the way to do it. I mean, that way, like, if your internet goes out, like, you still have access to your stuff. It's happened to us before. And, dude, but it's yes. actually not a bad idea when we're, like, you know, we talked about it before. We could, like, a news report us. Yeah. Like, it's just... Well, they do it on, um, um... Well, like, at the radio station I used to work at, I mean, the newsman there, he would not... He could literally have everything right on his laptop screen, but he printed everything out, which was a good idea because oftentimes, if you're trying to speed through, you know, do your normal news segment, yeah, you know, you could have an issue with your laptop and then, you know, you're out of luck. Yeah. Oh, should have printed that out. Yeah. I mean, simple as that. Yeah. So anyways, Aiden, uh, go ahead and read well, it off here. Well, did you want to talk about this, actually? Oh, I guess I this talk is, about this it. is political. And this would make sense to you to talk about this. Okay. Let me go ahead and lead it off then. So, as I said before we started uh, about mass psychosis is our yes. topic tonight. Well, for me, really quick before I start, this was something that I was inspired by by watching a video on YouTube when I sent it to Jared. Yeah, yeah. And he checked it, it out. Yep. And he's like, okay, this is cool. Like, we got to talk about this. Yeah. So, Joe, what is this? So, mass psychosis, a uh, phenomenon explained, this is from... Swifton Institute. Swifton Institute. So like org. A psychological. Uh, says mass yeah. information or mass formation psychosis is when a large part of a society focuses its attention to a leaders to a leader or a series of events that and their attention focuses on one small point or issue. Followers can be hypnotized and be led anywhere, regardless of data pro- proving otherwise. A key aspect of the phenomena is that the people they identify as the leaders, the ones that can solve the problem or issue alone, they will follow that leader regardless of any new information or data. Furthermore, anybody who questions the leader's narrative are attacked and disregarded. There are four key components needed for an environment to experience a mass formation psychosis. Lack of social bonds or decoupling of societal connections Lack of sense making well, things, things, don't make sense, things that don't make sense, free floating anxiety and free floating psychological discontent. What does that sound like? The past two years, right? Right. That sounds like COVID. Yeah. So yeah, I could see why you wanted me to read this. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> this is something that like mm, you know makes me mad. Well, think about this, right? Yeah. They're controlling us, is what this is trying to say. Yeah. They're leading us, because of COVID, they're leading us into this new world now where it's like, trust your government or else you're going to die. Yeah. They're almost becoming dictators in a sense. And that's what that video expanded on. And I didn't have time to put all of it down, but the video basically went into beyond this that they can use this then to um, do things like Instagram and TikTok and different social media accounts and stuff. They can literally control an entire population. Yeah. By brainwashing them and scaring them into submission. Yeah. What do you think about that, Jude? What's your thoughts? Well, that's that's true. I mean, we've seen that over the past two years yeah. with COVID. Yeah. 
And it's a proven um, phenomenon, too. It's been studied by scientists. Yeah, and it also... See, the thing is, yeah, you're right, Aiden. I mean, the government is trying to convince us that a certain way is the right way and the only way. Like, this world is crazy. I mean... It's psychotic. Right. It, it, we've seen it with the Twitter files when Elon Musk released it, right? No, I'm thinking of TikTok, dude. Like, TikTok's been making people crazy, dude. Well, yeah. Like, just with, like... I think it... I don't know if... Mm, uh, I think people's all already been crazy. Did you hear the story They've about, like, been. the um case of Tourette's popping up? When it was a bunch of cases of Tourette's popping up, and it was... Or Tourette's, like, symptoms popping up, and it was because of these people were all watching TikTok videos of people that have had Tourette's, and, like, they would vice about it, and so I, they started showing twitching. And, you know what it is? It's not that... It's, it's not that it... It's not... It's a smaller form of l- it. Let me finish my sentence. It's not that it is that they have that condition. No, that's what it's I'm saying. That, it's that they are watching TikTok and they they see that this is getting a lot of attention, a lot of views, and they want to emulate that. They want to repeat that and say, well, that's the popular thing. Tourette's are popular. People, yeah. people love other people with Tourette's. Yeah. It's like. Well, that's not really cool to start acting like you have Tourette's when you really don't. Right. And it's all, a lot of it is fake. Well, yeah, but no, no, I'm, no, I'm saying no, that's not what it was. It was literally, they were pointing that they were involuntarily like twitching as if like, they're acting like they, ha- they're fe- they feel like they w- have w- it. Without them even knowing though. Like, yeah, they would just start like spazzing and it's like, it, what's the, mm. that made me think of what's the correlation between what our brain intakes and how that actually affects our motor function. If our brain can be affected that much by taking in input and then it actually affects our motor skills, then we're, de- we're going on a dangerous road then with like all the stimulation we get from TikTok, from Snapchat, from Instagram, from, mm-hmm. you know. Well, I, th- I think another part of it too is if you think about like when you hang out with someone that says something like a certain phrase a lot you, you, you tend that phrase you tend to pick up that phrase yeah and why and without you even knowing it well cursing you, that's another example right and another thing is like i know it could be an unpopular opinion but it's not really an opinion it's fact like you start listening to music that you know has a lot of bad ideas in it you know like you know beating up women and and drugs and alcohol yeah. and robbing and killing and all this stuff you're like well i'm a good person i'll i'll never i'll yeah. never start talking like that or i'll never say anything like that and then those thoughts get stuck in the back of your head yeah it's like ingrained in your in your brain after psyche, so long yeah whether you know it or not and then it, a, it's subliminal it's subliminal yeah. messaging yeah and so it, it's true that yeah if you're exposed to this stuff you tend to pick up on it yeah and I think that's kind of what I, that's that's yeah. absolutely true. I just and 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 my studies of this stuff, I just found it fascinating the um how it linked to actual physical like display. Yeah, that's what I found fascinating. That a video could lead to actual physical supposed physical like response. Yeah, involuntary physical response. That's that- crazy. Yeah, it's all well. Humans are very impressionable creatures. Yeah, um, especially when at a very young age. So yeah. you know, like, like you got to watch what your kids are exposed to. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't. That's why I'm going to use Daily Wire Plus for my kids. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you got to well, watch. I, oh, I'm wanting to. Like, rather. like, yeah, like we've said in previous podcasts. You know, you got to, you got to basically pre-screen all this content. Yeah, which is very hard to do. It's just you know, so because, out there. because Disney is very good at it, you know, throwing in these subliminal messages to your yeah. kids like, oh, you know, it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that when it it's isn't. Okay to, yeah. You know? But not trying to get too deep into it, but, yeah. you know, that's what it is. And uh, next is expanding on mental health as a whole. Yeah. Did you want to read this one? Yeah. So, okay. Okay, so. Yeah. So, mentalhealth.gov, which I didn't know that was.gov. Um, that's fine. Um, so, 
Obviously, you guys know that. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) If I get a chance, Uh, I will use it. Now, guys, I want to preface all these discussions that I'm about to say with all these disorders I'm going to discuss. If you struggle with this, any of these, or if you struggle with mental health in general and you want to leave your stories or stuff in the comments, we'd be happy to hear them. Like, let's make ten, like let, let's make this pod, let's make this podcast a discussion in the comments. Let's make this a, uh, you know, something that actually goes somewhere. I guess I'm trying to say, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, trying to make it productive. Right. Yeah. Um. So anyway, this is from mentalhealth.gov. Um, mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act. It also helps determine how we handle stress relate to others, and make choices. Mental health is important at every stage in life. Every stage of life, sorry. From childhood to adolescence, and adolescence through adulthood. So, that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Because if you, you know, have bad mental health, that's not good. You know? Right, yeah. So, now we're going to go through some, I have a, a couple of these. Sure. Like, five or six, I think. So, like, just these are some of the more common ones, but they're still serious. So the first one is obviously um, the first mental disorder I would like to talk about. And one is the most prevalent right. one. It affects one in ten Americans, actually. Mm. Um, is depression. Um, depression, also known as major depressive disorder, is a common and serious medical illness or mental disorder, depending on how you want to word that, that negatively affects how you feel, the way you think, and how you act. Fortunately, fortunately it is also treatable. Depression causes feelings of sadness and or a loss of interest in activities you once enjoyed. It can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems that can decrease your ability to function at work and at home. Depression symptoms can vary from mild to severe and can include... Um, let me see. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, you're good. Feeling sad or having a depressed mood. Um, loss of interest or pleasure in activities once enjoyed. Mm. Changes in appetite, weight loss or gain unrelated, unrelated to dieting. Trouble sleeping and... Before I do this, I want to preface this by saying you're going to see with a lot of these disorders, a lot of these symptoms overlap. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, Trouble sleeping or sleeping too much. Loss of energy or increased fatigue. Increase of purposeless purposeless physical activity, e.g. inability to sit still, pacing, handwriting, um, feeling worthless or guilty, difficulty thinking, concentrating on making decisions. Thoughts of death or suicide, and symptoms must last at least two weeks, and must represent a change in your previous level of functioning for a diagnosis of depression. So these are the risk factors, just really quick. Um, but biochemistry, which is basically different brain chemicals like serotonin and stuff like that, mm-hmm. may contribute. Um, genetics, depression can one in families. For example, if one identical twin has depression, the other has a seventy percent chance of having the illness sometime in life. Seventy percent. That's a high percentage. That's a very big number. Um, so that could be. Hold on, that could that could be an issue. Well, mm. yeah, that can. Well, I I don't know how personable I should get with that, but, um, you know, I we've let's let's just say that we've talked at length. And, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's on a line up in my head, too. Let me just say that, yeah. Well, and also I was saying, too, is that, you know, like I said, Victoria has dealt with depression. Yeah. And, you know, that could be a concern for, you know, if we have kids in, yeah. in the future that, you know, that's something to look look yeah. out for. Look out for, yep. You know? Yeah. Um. You know, yeah. hopefully nothing like that will happen, oh, but, yeah. you know, just a concern. Plus, the society doesn't help that we're in right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, social media, like we just previously mentioned... Contributes to this. Yeah. It's been proven. Yeah. I'll tell you this. My kids don't get in social media until they're at least 13, if not older. Yeah. I mean, that's all I can say about that. Um, so That's and it, smart. Yeah. So, personality also is a risk factor. Um, People with low self... Go back to the article, guys. Um, People with low self-esteem who are easily overwhelmed by stress... Or who are generally pessimistic appear to be more likely to experience depression. Environmental factors. Continuous exposure to violence, neglect, abu- abuse, or poverty may make some people more vulnerable to depression. Environmental. Uh, social media. Put that in there. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> uh, treatment. 
depression is among the most treatable of mental disorders. Between eighty percent and ninety percent of, oh, between eighty and ninety percent, sorry, mm-hmm. of people with depression eventually respond to motor treatment. Almost all patients gain some relief from their symptoms. And let me pause there real quick. It's going to start talking about medication here in a minute. Yeah. But before, let me preface before we get into the medication yes. part of it. And I know what you're about to say. I think I know what you're about to say, but say it. I'm going to make sure that I'm thinking well, the same thing. Well, okay, so the thing is medication's not always the answer. Yep. Like I was telling Aiden in the car, you know, although ADHD is not the same thing as depression or, or on the on this level, but, you know, they do the same thing to young kids. They medicate them at, you know, 10 years of age because they can't concentrate in class, and the majority of them are male yeah. students. And you wonder, I've said this in previous episodes on our podcast as like well. The, like the podcast. The yeah, I, I believe that was the one I uh, said it on, is that, you know, young boys have a hard time at sitting still in, in a chair and, and paying attention. It's because of hunter-gatherers. Yeah, we're not meant to be sitting in a chair right. for – no kid is meant to be sitting in a chair for several hours a day. Especially males, though. Yeah. And so I think it's a genetic thing. Yeah. And to try to pin that treat, on, uh, to try to pin it on, oh, it's ADHD. ADHD, you know, which it does exist. First of all, that's kind of like but, offensive because ADHD is an actual serious condition. Yeah, like it's, but they. But the thing is, and it's an adult. Doctors are so open to just well because they're all money. Most of them are Cap- money yep, driven. Cap- that is one of the which I will admit I love capitalism, but that is one of the downsides of living in a capitalist society. Which is doctors, a lot, some of them, ninety five percent of them want to generally help people. Yeah, but there's one, some two percent are, of them that are money driven. Well, some of them try to push medication yes, when it could be solved in other money. ways. Well, for instance, like I was saying, uh, another treatment that I have, and they probably never mention it on here, is just go outside, go and for a walk, air. and breathe air. Get out of the house because the thing is, depression wants you to stay inside. It makes your, your body illness wants to. I, I don't. I don't claim to be a professional with depression because I've me never neither. had it. Right. Me and neither. Aiden, you've had depression. Right, right? But I'm not a psych. Yeah, but I'm not a psychiatrist though. Right. I but, I know so that, but I'm not a doctor, so I can't speak to the, really the brain works in that. And right. How it, but see, but here, I have been through it though. If that's what you ask, if that's I, what you're wondering, yes. I feel like the majority. I'm not saying if it's a like a, it'll cure you of your depression, but it'll certainly I, I help feel you a feel heck better. Heck of a lot better in the summer. They're doing the window, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, because you have the opportunity to step outside, yes, breathe, and fresh breathe air, the fresh air, fresh warm air, and you can go out on walks. And... Why do you think I was so sad doing COVID? Yeah, during the lockdown. Yeah, like took an already kind of messed up brain and made it worse. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and I, uh, you know, I feel like uh, doctors don't want to do that because there's no money involved in, in, involved yes. in it. So they're like, oh, here's some here's some medicine. Go, no, no offense. Go take it. No offense. You guys do great work, but the same reason why therapists keep having their patients coming back to talk. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it seems like it never ends with that. But in, in some of them. Right. Like I said, uh, as well as with pharmacists, 95% of therapists generally want to help you. Yeah. And again, I'll use my fiance as an example because I can... I, that's the only thing I know from a personable perspective. Yeah, is that she was taking medication for depression. Yeah, but the um, I mean that's just all I from thinking. Well, she's been taking it for years. Different. Yeah. She took different medications at different points yeah. in time. Um, but eventually, she's been off of the medication for at least a couple years now. Uh, but when she got off the medication, I mean, she felt completely different, and she felt better. Because okay. she felt like the depression medication was, I don't know. Well, we'll talk about that it, in the it, other section of it. Yeah, but it fun, was definitely. It's, it's funny what. But it was definitely hindering do. her yeah. daily life, even though it's supposed to help. You well, know? let me. You want to go in that really quick? Let's go ahead. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So speaking of medication, um, the yeah. bleeding Jared. Um, You're welcome. Brain chemistry may contribute to an individual's depression and may factor into the treatment. For this reason, antidepressants might be prescribed to help modify one's brain chemistry. These medications are not sedatives, uppers, or tranquilizers. 
do you not have it for me? Generally, antidepressant medications have no stimulating effect on people not, exper- not experiencing depression. Antidepressants might produce some improvement within the first week or two of use, yet full benefits may not be seen for two or three months. If a patient feels little or no improvement after several weeks, his or her psychiatrist can alter the dose of the medication or add mm. or substitute another antidepressant. In some situations, other psychotropic medications may be helpful. It is important to let your doctor know if a medication does not work or if you experience side effects. The big thing there was might may not be seen for two to three months. Now, doctors still don't really... They're still doing research as to why that is. Yeah. As to why the brain takes that long to intake those chemicals. Yeah. There's still ongoing research about that, so I can't come to a definitive conclusion on that, but... Yeah, and... It, the antidepressants are really new, too, in the world of medicine, let me just tell you. It's still relatively new. Right. Well, and a lot of this... There's a lot we still don't know. I mean, I feel like a lot of this can be solved on without medication. I, In my opinion is that, well, not, not like, obviously medication is needed for certain situations, especially but other... Doctors always say about the medication plus doing something. It's always why it's added on to something. There's yeah. a reason for that. Yeah, and it's because they have... It's usually medication plus what's called psychotherapy, Yeah, which is talking, obviously. They'll but, and all that. you know, I, I think that instead of doing the medication route, which is easy for a doctor to prescribe... Here, just take these pills. Here, and... just take these, you know, uh, take this every, you know, once or twice a day or whatever the dosage is. Happy pills. And it's like, here's your happy pills, you know, yeah. you'll feel better in like several weeks or whatever. But instead of waiting several weeks... Well, I could do the exact opposite. Yeah, Some or, people, which is that's really why weird. It, it, yeah, it can it's really... It's an antidepressant. Yeah. Well, it can screw up me and my friend of some attitude. friends that have really went down the whales after taking what's supposed to help them. Like really went down the whales. Like So did they end up um getting off of it eventually? I don't know. All I know is that they've had they had thoughts and mm. like I'm like, that's so weird that it affects it like that. Like what? Sorry, I'm not trying to be nosy there. I just wanted no. to know if you... Hence why, guys, if I'm saying if you don't have depression, please don't use this as a booster because it would not do that. Yeah. Like, please, I employ you, please. Like, don't. Yeah. Because it's not good. But yes, I really do agree with what Joe said. Like, how do you know it's not just a seasonal thing and someone comes on and it's like, oh, I'm better. And you just changed your entire brain chemistry because... For a certain time, he felt this way. Yeah, because I That's mean, why for me, I know this says two weeks, but I say give it a year. And yeah. if you still feel like that, then get help because, yeah. And and there's, there's, you know, there's certain things that, you know, you should probably try to help with your, your mental disorder yes. before resulting to, resorting to medication. Something that changes your brain, literally. Yeah. And the thing is, another thing I, I another point I heard like, recently, Aiden, like, so was I, sorry, I didn't want to. No, let me finish this yeah. real quick. Is that medication? A lot of these medications don't have a lot of research yet. Like I said, they're still relatively new. Hence, like, hence, like yeah. the reason why people didn't want to get the COVID vaccine. Same, yeah. same situation. Yeah. Not a lot of research was put into it, and they're like, oh, because I mean, the one thing that's confusing to doctors is the human brain. Yeah. Even though there's the most complex organ in the body for a reason. Yeah. There's doc. Most doctors at all doctors, they don't have a full. They even haven't fully mapped it. They even haven't full. They haven't even fully mapped it out yet, actually. Yeah. So how, so how can you expect to know everything about it? If you haven't even fully mapped the thing out yet, like doesn't that scary with like brain surgeons? Yes. Because they don't really know the brain. They're poking around something that they don't really fully know about. Yeah, yeah, that's terrifying. Well, because I heard that, like, if you get brain surgery or, like, you say you had a tumor or something r- removed. I had, like, a neurosurgeon, yeah. Yeah, you have to have the patient do something, like, say if they were uh, played the violin, they have to play the violin while they do the surgery on your brain. Yeah. Because, yeah. because if they mess, if they injure something in your head and well, you stop uh, playing the violin all of a yeah. sudden, then, then they screwed up, yeah. you know? 
But don't know. That's why. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, yep. oh, oh, it just freaks me out because I don't want to be awake for any. D- don't. D- don't. Oh. I've, I've, don't. Joe, I'll tell you right now. No need to freak out. I've done tons of research into that. You're fully numb. You're absolutely fully numb. No, just numb. the you thought of it. it. What? Yeah, yeah no. no. Pol- then poking around. Like, yeah, that's. That's weird to think about. It's all it's all yeah. in my head. Like same thing with drawing blood. No, tr- I can't do that either. <laughs> Speaking from someone who's been through at least ten surgeries, I mean, I know that's a completely different world. But if I'm speaking with someone who's had a lot of surgeries, I don't think it's anything to even worry about. Yeah, they know what they're doing. Like, no, I know. I it's yeah. not that I'm worried. It's just I'm very. Uh, ooh, I yeah, get yeah, very... it gets under your skin, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So, do you want to talk about this one, Jude? Yeah. So next. Uh, disorder is bipolar disorder. This is another big one. Uh, This is from verywellmind.com. Yeah. It says bipolar disorder isn't just about having mood swings. It's a serious mental health condition that that used to be referred to as manic depression, which I guess that's where it comes from, like manic episode. They describe it um, like... Bipolar people go through a manic episode. Yeah. Do you like know how, what this is? Yeah. Do you know what that is yet? Like specifically, or have you not really done? No, I know. I know what it is. Okay, good. There are two main types of bipolar disorder that can differ in terms of the severity and nature of their symptoms. People with bipolar disorder experience dramatic shifts in mood that may include periods of depression and mania. The nature and severity of these symptoms depend on the type of bipolar disorder that they have. Bipolar 1, individuals with bipolar 1 experience at least one manic episode in their lives. Although not required for the formal diagnosis, the vast majority will also experience major depressive episodes during the course of their lives. Bipolar 2, individuals with bipolar 2 have at least one hypomanic hypomanic episode, a, a, a less serious form of mania. Mania and at least one major depressive episode. Yeah. So mania or hypomania symptoms. Yeah. Symptoms of manic or hypomanic episode include one, being easily distracted, decreased need for sleep, delusions or hallucinations. Which that one surprised me. What delusions or hallucinations? Yeah. I've always attributed that to the next one we'll talk about, but mm. do you want to take over for this one or no? What am I going to do? What do you mean? Like take over reading or do you want to? No, I can finish reading this. Cool. Oh, yeah. I'm just wondering. Unless you want to, but I'm I'll, fine with I'll do the um next couple. Okay. I'll finish this yeah. part. Elevated or expansive mood. Gra- Grandiosity. Grandiosity or inappropriate behavior. Impulsive risk behaviors, including gambling and lavish spending. Increased sexual desire. Irritability, hostility, or aggression physical agitation and relentless movement manic episodes last at least seven days hypomanic episodes involve the same symptoms but the individual's functioning isn't markedly impaired and there are no psychotic symptoms Sometimes. and you can read this next section yeah so the hypomanic do the only difference between manic and hypomanic yeah if I'm reading this white right, is it's everything but like the delusions and the Hallucinations because that would fall under psychotic. Yeah. Um, so bipolar depression symptoms. Um, during a depressive episode, an individual may experience the following symptoms: crying for no reason or prolonged periods of sadness, difficulty concentrating or indecisiveness, extreme fatigue, including the inability to get out of bed, feelings of guilt or hopelessness, loss of interest in activities, loss of interest in health, nutrition, and physical appearance, sleeping excessively, or difficulty sleeping. Suicidal thoughts or an impulse to self-harm. You see how some of these are, like I said, overlapping. Some of these symptoms are yep. overlapping. So how to treat. Cognitive behavioral therapy. Psychoeducation. Family therapy and psychotherapy. Medications. These are some of the names. Um, Anticonvulsant, antipsychotics, and SSRIs. Which SSRIs are an antidepressant, obviously. But I was surprised that antipsychotics are on there. Yeah. Like, hmm? Well, see, I don't know about you, but and I have someone in my family that has bipolar disorder. Me too, and it's scary. It is scary. Um, I don't. The thing is, with bipolar disorder, you don't know what version of that person you're going to get that day. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because my he's my uncle. Okay. Yeah. Let me guess. He could be absolutely elated, or he could be mad and throwing stuff. 
Yeah, he could he could either yeah. be the uncle that I grew up knowing. Yeah. Or he can be like completely standoffish, don't want to talk to you, very short, you know, yeah. and it's like he he acts completely different. Completely closed off. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of I don't want to go too it's kind of kind of gives some insight though into what is it's, going on then in a brain chemically. Yeah. Yeah, it's something I don't really want to go to on the air. I can talk yeah, to you yeah, off no, air about yeah, it, but yeah, no. Um, but no, I completely uh, understand. Yeah, I, it, it messes people up. Is what it, I'm trying to it say. It is though. a family uh, thing, yeah. and I don't think I should be talking about about it too much. But it is definitely hard to. It's it's been hard on everyone on that side of the family. Yeah, you know, with dealing with that condition. Yeah. Um. So I can understand, you know, how bipolar disorder can really mess with people. Yeah. And really screw up families too. And th- that's why I'm praying that it gets cured. Because like we need, like we need a cure for all these. Because it's like there are a lot of people in the U.S. that struggle with it, and it's just like mm-hmm. we should not. That's the thing. It's just like that's one of the things that I agree to make this political for a second. I guess since you opened up this avenue. That's one of the things that I do agree on the Democrats with, is that, like, we need better, like, mental health screenings. Like, this needs to be taken care of. All of these. All of these. And the pro- taken care of. The problem is, is that a lot of these people are... They don't do it the right way, though. And they don't, aren't willing to get it solved. Yeah. Like, so, say if I am going through a men- mental health disorder, I'm dealing with it, but... You know, I I have to be willing to get the help. Yeah. And that, and, that, <laughs> and that's problematic for a lot of people. <laughs> I'm just going to say this. Oh, I stood for so many years and not wanted to get help. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm more comfortable talking about it on air than some other people would be. But, yeah, I went through at least, like, two years where I wasn't even wanting help. Like, and it's like, okay. I need help. Like this is, I'm not gonna keep doing this. This is not yeah. okay. At a certain My point, my question is like, this is yeah. not okay. Yeah, at a certain point, you do need to seek help. Yeah. So if there's anyone that is dealing with a mental Stuff. disorder, yeah, or anything, I mean, you know, don't just hold it in for yourself, and you know, because I mean, that could be life threatening, yeah. especially if you have the the next uh on, we'll the, the next about, one yeah. we're gonna talk about. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's, you know, in order to get help, you have to be willing to seek it. Yeah. And, you know, just trying to seek out help is a huge jump from doing nothing. Yeah. You know, because. And let me tell you from experience, guys, the helpers don't judge you. They don't. Yeah. They, I know that's a lot of feels that a lot of you guys have. Yeah. And I, I mean, know that because I felt it. Yeah. Yeah. But no, they don't judge you at all, guys. Like, seriously. Like, please. Like, they're there to they, help they you. They get paid to help you. Yeah. That's the whole purpose in their job. Yeah, that's what they went to school for. Yeah. Yep. So, Aiden, you were really interested in this one specifically. Yeah. So, schizophrenia. First of all... Psychiatry.org, right? Yeah. Schizophrenia. First of all, that name just sent shivers down my spine. And you'll understand why in a second. Mm -hmm. Um, Schizophrenia is a chronic brain disorder that affects less than 1% of the U.S. population, which means it's rare. When schizophrenia is active, symptoms can include delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, trouble with thinking, a lack of motivation. However, with treatment, most symptoms of schizophrenia will greatly improve and the likelihood of a recurrence can be diminished. While there was no cure for schizophrenia, research is leading to innovative and safer treatments. Experts also are unraveling the causes of the disease by studying genetics, conducting behavioral research, and using advanced imaging to look at the brain's structure and function. These approaches hold the promise of new and more effective therapies. The complexity of schizophrenia may help explain why there are misconceptions about the disease. Um, Schizophrenia does not, and I want to preface this, please. Schizophrenia does not mean split personality or multiple personality. Most people with schizophrenia are not any more dangerous or violent than people in the general population. Mm, yeah, that's... And that's a really important thing to remember because what do you see 
Do you know it? And a lot of comic book movies, or in a lot of they make them out to be a violent person, and like the Joker, yeah, like he's a mentally disturbed lunatic, and he's blowing up buildings, and right, yeah, it's not like that. It's very, it's a very com- schizophrenia in particular is a very complex illness. It's very complex, yeah. And we're going to why here right now. Um, so some symptoms. First one being psychosis. Um, psychosis refers to a set of symptoms characterized by a loss of touch of re- with reality due to a disruption in the way that the brain processes, processes information. When someone experiences a psychotic episode, the person's thoughts and perceptions are disturbed, and the individual may have difficulty understanding what is real and what is not. Um, which, let's disi- dissect that for a second. Um, that would be scary. Yeah. Like, can you imagine losing touch with reality, whatever that even means? Like, what does it even look like or feel like? Like, what? It's almost like the filter on your brain is turned off. I would that... imagine it like it's almost like an out-of-body experience where you're watching yourself, and it's like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, well, you know, like, when people take, like, shrooms? And... Get out of my head! Yes, that's, it's almost that's like what, that's what it's almost came, like psychedelics. Yes, that's what literally came to my mind. But it's not willingly like, oh, you know, let me. I'm take gonna get this messed and, up. Yeah, yeah. No, this is normal for them. Yeah, think about that. Well, like, what we we were theorizing about, like, what is reality, funny, right? Yeah. I, I, and when we were talking about that podcast, you mean about like the time travel and stuff? Well, no, not time travel, about drugs. We were talking about, I think... Oh, marijuana, The marijuana yes. podcast, Yes, yes, and then we wanted to do something about psychedelics, and we got into that a little bit, yes. But I, I know we briefly mentioned it at, at one point. Yeah, we did, yeah. We were talking we, about tombs in general, yeah, actually. And one thing, I don't know how far we went into that it, That was but way back. That was a long time ago. That's 2018, actually. Probably, yeah, I think it was. The it, first year of doing it. Um, yes, but we had talked about tombs a little bit, and we had discussed the topic of this. Yeah, we touched upon psychosis, right? And, and what, what I was can... what I was going towards here was, and this is kind of like, whoa, man, let me sit back and like theorize right. about this, oh, right. dude. Right. You know, like but what is though, what, like, what's reality? You right. know, like that's honestly like what is it? You know, we especially kinda... to a person with schizophrenia. Yeah, because you wonder in these like the uh, the only reason we're seeing this computer right now. And smelling coffee is because there are chemical processes in our brain that are firing that are telling us that that's what that is. Yeah. Hence why people believe in things like angels and heaven and hell and, you know. Yeah. It is, uh, I don't know, that's like a, that's something to look into, like, that could be like a whole conspiracy there is just... Or just us theorizing about like what is reality because reality seems to be different to each person. You know what I mean? Like there's, you know, I mean, we're getting into this weed with these weeds. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, this is something that's like very um, yes, like we can theological. Morty-esque. Like this is like you know, this is something like you know. Really, really smart people talk about. Yeah, that's one of Peter but, said it came to my mind. Yeah, but um, this is like what? Like what is reality? Is the question? Like, is it? You know what? You and I are sitting here right now. Like that's what I'd like to think is that yeah, this is yeah. reality. You and me, no doubt, sitting right here. No doubt. Are we in the matrix kind of thing? Like you know, like I don't yeah. know. Well, that that goes into this next point right here, Joe. If you don't mind me going on here, go ahead. Our delusions, our fixed false beliefs that. Held despite clear and reasonable evidence that they are not true. Persecutory or paranoid delusions where a person believes they are being harmed or harassed by another person or group are the most common. Mm. So if you were schizophrenic, what he just said would be considered a delusion. Yeah. That we're in the matrix and we're being... And what I'm saying about that is, like, it's a delusion to us. Yeah. To them, it's reality. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Like, what the que- It's like, what is a woman? But what is reality? That is like, a, it's a, that is an actual important question because it's like to them that's fully real. Yeah. And it's terrifying to them. And on a lesser, funnier note, you know, people have their own facts. Yeah. You know, you have you're entitled to your own opinion, 
but not your own facts. But right. people are in their own reality when they say, oh, no, this happened. Yeah. You know, when facts say otherwise. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I don't yeah, know. That's something have. to theorize about. Okay. Anyways, this continuing. Is, oh, this is going to be it. So, Joan, I'm sorry. View discretion advised this stuff might kind of creep you out. Okay. Just hearing some of this stuff. Um, so hallucinations are the experience of hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, or feeling things that are not there. They are vivid mm-hmm. and clear with an impression similar to, similar to normal perceptions. Auditory hallucinations, which are hearing voices of the most common schizophrenia and related disorders. Disorganized thinking and speech are for the thoughts and speech that are jumbled and or do not make sense. For example, the person may switch from one topic to, to another or respond with an unrelated topic in conversation. The symptoms are severe enough to cause substantial problems with normal communication. Disorganized or abnormal motor, motor behavior are movements that can range from childlike silliness to unpredictable agitation or can manifest as repeated movements without purpose. So, stimming? Uh, whoa, what? Okay. Um, when the behavior is severe, it can cause problems in the performance of activities of daily life. And it includes catatonia. When a person appears as if in a daze with little movement or response to the surrounding environment. And just because I think you know what I was thinking, yes. Yeah, just because yeah. the it that I do some of that doesn't mean you have it. Yeah. And that's the problem is people like Thank to, you for thank you for I'm yeah. just trying to make sure that you don't start safe, thinking yeah. that you have it. But yeah. You know, like that's the problem with WebMD. People are like, and oh, to you the know, thing about hearing voices, yes, I hear my name, but that's at work. And that's when I've already been bombarded with a ton of yeah. simulation. So it's going to make sense if my brain says it every once in a while. And, just... and you're always on, like, high alert yeah. at work because yeah. you're, like, making sure that you're able to respond to people when they need you. Right. And sometimes and it's you... just my name, too. Yeah. Whereas with these people, it's full-on conversations yeah. in their head. Yeah, if you're having full-on conversations... It's like a constant dialogue. Yeah. Then you might be in some it's trouble there, yeah. yeah. So... Although this is crazy, um, negative symptoms refer to what is abnormally lacking or absent in the person with a psychotic disorder. Examples include impaired emotional expression, decreased speech output, reduced desire to have social contact or to engage in daily activities, and decreased pleasure of, ex- of decreased experience of pleasure. So this is what fascinated me, Jared. Mm-hmm. Symptoms of schizophrenia usually first appear in early adulthood, and must persist for at least six months for a diagnosis to be made. <gasps> Men often experience initial symptoms in their late teens or early 20s, mm. while women tend to show first signs of the illness in their 20s and early 30s. More subtle signs may be present earlier, including troubled relationships, poor school performance, and reduced motiv- motivation. Treatment. Now, actually, I'll talk about it after. Treatment. There was no cure for schizophrenia, as we've been saying. Mm-hmm. Many patients do well with minimal symptoms. A variety of antipsychotic medications are effective in reducing the psychotic symptoms present in the acute phase of the illness, and they also help reduce the potential for future acute episodes and their severity. Psychological treatments such as cognitive behavioral therapy or supportive psychotherapy may reduce symptoms and enhance function, and other treatments are aimed at reducing stress, supporting employment, or improving social skills. Mm. Now, Jared will probably not fully disagree on this, and I'm okay with that, but with schizophrenia... I really do think that medication is the first route you should go. Because this isn't like depression where it can be, you know, you can go outside and it goes away because you're feeling good about yourself. No, this is like literally you're hearing voices and well, you know, it's, it's telling you to either kill someone or go jump off a bridge. or Like that is little brain chemicals right there. And that needs help, med- like chemically. That needs help. Well, yeah, and I let me clarify. I wasn't yeah. saying that every single mental illness is... Why? No, no, no. Wait, you know, no, like, no, oh, you can, you know, just go walk outside and you'll feel better. Right, and no. also, you know, just there's always alternative ways to solving the issue. Right. There isn't. I mean, right. sometimes the only way to solve the issue is medication. Yeah. Same thing with, it's obviously not a mental problem, but... Cancer. Yeah. I mean, you don't be don't pull. You a, can't just walk outside and you don't have cancer anymore. Yeah. I mean, like you know, um, my cure for cancer is eating healthier. You yeah. know, like no, that's no, not going to help you, no, dude. Like no, you need, your cells are your cells are still dividing at an abnormal weight. So yeah, like you need medical attention. Yeah. Like this is 
you know, and same thing with this. I mean, it's not like easily. These are one of those mental illnesses that is absolutely terrifying and serious. Yeah, like it needs medication so then you don't go crazy. Yeah. Or you try to avoid those yeah. psychotic episodes. Because when they do get bad, they get really bad. They're really, really bad. Yeah. I mean, like people will get killed or uh, like, yeah. Well, they hurt themselves. Mm. It's like, I cannot imagine, to end this, talk about this disorder really quick, I cannot imagine what it's like to live inside that mo- kind of a mind. Mm. That's always being bombarded constantly with, like, voices, and I didn't touch upon this, but I know people talk about auditory most of the time, but I can't imagine what it's like to hear that, and then for a lot of schizophrenics, they see things, too. Mm-hmm. Like, they'll just be walking at work, and all of a sudden, a shadow person will appear in front of them, or if we can... Oh, God, yeah. Like, think about that. It's like, what the heck? They're like on a constant trip. And there is a theory, to end this, Judd, this will give you something to think about. There is a theory why they have hallucinations. So, I don't know if you know what the drug DMT is. Do you know? Not exactly. It's like LSD, but you smoke it, right? Okay. And it's way more intense. But scientists do know that your brain creates DMT in your body. So they think there is a recent theory going around that schizophrenia, the reason why they have hallucinations and visually at least, is because their brain is producing an abnormal amount of DMT Mm. in their brain. Again, that could be completely wrong, but that's something that they may think because this is one that's been studied for years. So you think that they're possibly, they could possibly have a breakthrough on... Issues like, like uh, mental disorders like this? Well, it, it's not a breakthrough. It's just like that's what's happening in their brain because it's naturally producing it rather than... Well, yeah, and that's Rather all, than them taking it through like a blunt or something. Well, and that's also a problem too. It's like if Yeah, you, don't give them drugs. Yeah, no, don't. Well, here's the other thing. It's like since people do not understand... Oh, I was like, what is that noise? That's yeah. you. Don't understand um, the brain very well. Yeah, then it's hard to find a way to treat it. Yeah. So that's why a lot of these mental disorders are like, you know, they just throw this medication at uh, at a person with this disorder and it's like, okay, well, just throw spaghetti at the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's not like 100% certain that it's going to help Especially them. Especially with one like this. Yeah, and then you also you don't know if it will actually do more harm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. But That's also, why there's still a debate about using psychedelics for medical help. And we I mean, you've talked at length about that. Yeah. And also you got to consider too, it's like, there's no win. There's not a win in this situation. Like, you know, you can't be like, well, you know, since the, we're not sure on the medication, just don't take, the medication. No, because well, then no, you'll you hallucinations again. And yeah, you're going to go you're going to go bat, you know what, crazy. Yeah. And you know, so you're going to have to take it. Yeah. Even if because you don't want Well, to. and that's what a lot of doctors are saying. Let's get the funny. They're saying it won't cure, but it'll at least keep it curbed. Yeah. It's not a solution, but it's you a You know what's funny is that even with the medication doing it, I didn't know this until recently. Mm-hmm. They still heal voices. Really? It's just at a much lower level. Like they don't... They don't really care about it. I'm like, that's weird. Like, it doesn't even fully shut it off. Yeah. That's how powerful it is, like... That is crazy. Yeah. Something something interesting that I found out. Yeah. You want me to talk about this one? Yeah. Okay. So this is another one that you've probably heard about. Yes, I've heard about this one. So this is Borderline Personality Disorder, or BPD. Yeah. Uh, this is from VeryWellMind.com. That's another one from them, which I try to find them to link them together. Yeah. So, yeah. so Borderline Personality Disorder is a serious psychological condition characterized by unstable moods and emotions, relationships, and behavior. During a BPD episode, a person may act impulsively, engage in risky behavior, switch moods quickly, have higher levels of anger, appear numb, or experience paranoia. Yeah. 
Huh. And an estimated 1.4% of the adult population, which doesn't seem like a lot, has borderline personality disorder, with roughly three-quarters of the diagnoses occurring in women, although it is suggested that this is due to high rates of misdiagnosis in men. And why can't they do that with ADHD? It's interesting. Right, that it, they do that, but yet... Well, yeah. he, here's that thing that we talked about in a previous podcast. We talked about how men show their ADHD in different ways than women do. Women do. Yeah. And I guess same thing could apply for this. Like men. Women show it more than yeah, and, men and, in this and case. And maybe yeah. originally when they discovered this mental disorder. It was a woman that was suffering was, with it. It was a woman that was suffering with it, and they applied it to men as well, even though. Yeah. Yeah. Men don't handle yeah. it the same way. Yeah. Um, borderline personality disorder can interfere with a person's ability to enjoy life or achieve fulfillment in relationships, work, or school. Because it, it because it is a personality disorder, someone may not show signs of BPD until their personality develops, with most diagnoses occurring in patients over well, 18 years of age. And then the number, that was just like I had a, I forgot to. Oh, okay. Really. So... Symptoms of personality or borderline personality often appear and can create significant problems in the following areas. Behaviors. BPD is associated with a tendency to engage in risky and impulsive behaviors, such as going on shopping sprees, excessive drug or alcohol use, engaging in promiscuous or risky sex, or binge eating. They're also more prone to engage in self-harming behaviors, such as cutting or burning and attempting suicide. Mm. Emotions. Emotional instability is a key feature of BPD. Individuals feel like they're on an emotional roller coaster with quick mood shifts, i.e. going from feeling okay to feeling extremely down or blue within a few minutes. Mood changes can last from minutes to days and are often intense. Anger, anxiety, and overwhelming emptiness are common as well. Relationships. People with Borderline personality disorder tend to have intense relationships with loved ones characterized by frequent conflicts, arguments, and breakups. BPD is associated with an intense fear of being abandoned by loved ones. This leads to difficulty trusting others and attempts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. Putting a strain on relationships, it's also common for someone with BPD to have a favorite person or someone they feel they cannot live without. Mm, that's interesting. Self-image, individuals with BPD have difficulties related to the stability of their sense of self. They report many ups and downs in how they feel about themselves. One moment they may feel good about themselves, but the next they may feel that they are bad or even evil. Stress-related changes in thinking under conditions of stress. People with borderline personality disorder may experience changes in thinking, including paranoid thoughts. For example, thoughts that Others may be trying to cause them harm or disassociation, feeling spaced out, numb, or like they're not really in their body. Hmm. That's just... so dissociation is basically the feeling. Joe, do you um, do you know like when you're driving? Yeah, and you basically go on autopilot and like, hmm, how did he get home so quickly? Yeah, you kind of like zone of, out. Of a, it's a more very mild form of dissociation, basically. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Um. Causes. Uh, With them, though, it's a lot more intense, obviously. Yeah, of course. Um, brain structure. There is evidence of differences in brain structure and function in individuals with BPD, especially in the parts of the brain that affect impulse control and emotional regulation. Which would make sense because of the risky behaviors. Right. However, it's unclear if these differences are a result of having BPD or if they are part of the cause. Interesting. Uh, about that, so. ooh, okay, genetics. There appears to be a genetic component to borderline personality disorder as it's not uncommon for close family members to have this condition. Negative. This uh, is the one that's 90% of these cases, by the way, from at least from what I've heard. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was just reading no. it again. Mm. Yeah. Negative experiences. Many people diagnosed with BPD have experienced childhood abuse, trauma, neglect, or were separated from their caregivers at an early age. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
So because of that, they're putting basically, um, their brain basically just um, flips a switch and it's like, there you go. That's what's happening now. Yeah. So I can imagine that. Um. Uh. So, but there was hope though. There was treatment, right? Yeah, so getting help from a mental health professional is critical. With consistent treatment, you can live a better quality of life with fewer symptoms. Find someone who specializes in BPD and can provide treatments targeted to this condition. This is important because if you aren't getting the right treatment, it may not be as effective. Right. Uh, so we don't have to read all this. I was just doing research. Okay. So basically, uh, psychotherapy and medication, as it said, yeah, can help. I, I'm, I'm just doing all this for weapons, Joe, so we can see it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't feel like we have to read all this, I was going to say. Yeah. All this stuff is there for us just to look at. Yeah. And, you know, like, um, just in case you needed to hear that. It's just, I don't, thank God, I haven't been in this position. Mm-hmm. But, like, a lot of these, I don't know what it's like to have this because it's like, I have not or never do want to go through so much trauma that your brain has to basically switch into a different mode for life now because of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's for certain. Well, this one's an interesting one. Yeah. You want me to talk about this one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so. Obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, um, is a mental disorder, obviously, that affects people of all ages and walks of life, and it occurs when a person gets caught in a cycle of obsessions or compulsions. Mm. Obsessions are unwanted intrusive thoughts, images, or urges that trigger intensely distressing feelings. Compulsions are behaviors an individual engages in to attempt to get rid of the obsessions and or decrease distress. Obsessions are thoughts, images, or impulses that occur over and over again and feel outside of the person's control. Individuals with OCD do not want to have these thoughts and find them disturbing. In most cases, people with OCD realize that these thoughts are illogical. Obsessions are are typically accompanied by intense and uncomfortable feelings such as fear, disgust, uncertainty, and, and doubt, or a feeling that things have to be done in a way that is, quote, just right. In the context of OCD... Obsessions are time-consuming and get in the way of important activities the person, the person values. This last part is extremely important to keep in mind as it, in part, determines whether someone has OCD or psychological disorder rather than just an obsessive personality trait. So that's perfectionism. Mm. Um, so some common obsessions, you know, right? Mm. So contamination obsessions. Fear of coming into contact with perceived contaminated substances or things, such as Body fluids, germs, and disease such as COVID-19 mm-hmm. um, or HIV. That's another one. Um, environmental contaminants such as asbestos, household chemicals, cleaners, solvents, battery acid. So violent obsessions, fear of acting on impulse to harm others, violent or horrific images, um, responsibility obsessions, fear of being responsible for something terrible happening like a car accident. Fear of harming others because I'm not being careful enough. Perfectionism-related obsessions. Um, having to make sure everything's right. Mm. Um, excessive concern with a need to know or remember. Fear of losing or forgetting important information when throwing something out. Excessive concern with performing tasks perfectly or correctly. Fear of making mistakes. And this one is interesting. I didn't know about this one. Um, sexual obsessions. Obsessions. Mm, I didn't think about that either. Unwanted thoughts or mental images related to sex, including fear of acting on a sex-related impulse, fear about sexually harming children, relatives, or others, fear about aggressive sexual behaviors towards others, and religious moral obsessions, excessive concern with offending God, damnation, and or concern about blasphemy. Hmm. Interesting. And then that also ties into morality. And then, this is the one that we can dis- dissect really quick, Jared, if you don't mind. Sure. Identity obsessions. Mm-hmm. Excessive concerns with one with one's sexual orientation and excessive concern with one's gender identity. Okay, so the, yeah, that's, that's what you were going at when you were before talking we to me before this, we started. Yeah. yeah. So, you want to dissect this one? 
What do you want to say about this one? Yeah, I can, I can talk about it. Because this I ties mean, into the political aisle a little bit, too. Yeah. Um, well, we already kind of knew, uh, whether you want to admit it or not, that, I mean, I, I, I never thought that it was OCD was, um, what it could have been, but I already kind of knew that like having this, it was a mental it, thing concern least, with yeah. your own sexual orientation could be, or gender identity could be a mental illness. Like yeah. I knew that it was involved something mental. with that. Something it was mental. something mental because it wasn't like, and it's not, they're not physically a girl. There's no way. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's not, well, they're not, and you can't blame Sure, you know, we make fun of those people all the time for like, okay, you know, you're with a lifestyle or whatever. You know, yeah. you're you're being stupid, you're making you're saying uh, you're a walrus or whatever to yeah. say something like from Matt Walsh's thing. Right, 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 um, right, right. But you know, you come up with all these silly identities and whatnot, you laugh at it, but then you're like, Man, these people actually have a mental issue. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's not like, you know, you wanna make sense of it and 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 it turns out, Aiden, you, you have a name to it. Right on yeah. the head. You yeah. have a name on it now, Jared. Yeah. And you found this from what website was it? Uh, let me go up really quick. I want to make sure I get it right. Uh, I uh, O C D. Oh, oh, oh that, that's the International OCD Foundation. Okay. So it's a whole federation, I mean, foundation dedicated to this condition. And it's interesting that, and you know that. Yes, I did. Make sure I had trustworthy sources too. I really tried to make sure that I had. So I think I did a good job at this. But and it's uh, interesting that you know this website was willing to admit that yeah, if you are having these identity uh, obsessions, am I gay? And, you know, am I gay or like you know what identity am I today? You know, right. kind of thing that it falls in with a mental disorder. Like uh, that they're willing to admit it that yeah, this is a mental thing. This isn't yeah. just you know. Um, this isn't just the norm, you yeah. know what I mean? Because a mental disorder is not normal. That's yeah. why they call it a disorder right. because and it's not, it's out it, they it's out make, of order. They want to make a mental disorder a mental order. Yeah, that's why. Look at the root word. Yeah. It's disorder. Order. Yes. People are yeah. People and are trying to make it normal, and it's not. Like try people try to make it you know. It's the cool thing, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of people I don't think are... I guess are, we can cover the last 10, 20 minutes with that talk, but I'll wait to do that, but yes. Yeah. Um, and is there anything else? Just compulsions um, really quick. Um, just relationship-related yeah. related stuff, too, basically feeling like they're always doing their part in a harm. Uh, We're going to go back to that identity thing, though, before we... Well, yes, this. yes, we yeah. will. Because there's a um, lot to talk about yes. on that. Um, compulsions. Thank goodness we think so much alike. Um, so compulsions are repetitive behaviors or thoughts that a person uses with the intention of neutralizing, kind of like, you know, making their obsessions go away. That's the difference, guys, between that and perfectionism. Mm -hmm. So when someone says, oh, my goodness, I'm that's making my OCD go crazy. If something's out of line, it's like, no, you don't st you do not struggle with OCD. Mm. Do you have thoughts about sexually harming children? No, then that's not OCD. Well, I mean, I I know what you're talking about. You're saying that like people are they're like perfectionists. They're yeah. not OCD sufferers. They, it, they have OCD tendencies, yeah. is what I heard. Yes. But it's not full on OCD. Like it's not say, OCD at all. So yeah, not OCD at all. Like okay, so me, I like to have a clean room and I like to make sure everything is the way it is. That's why it's called. That's why it's called OCD and not CD. Yeah. Not compulsive disorder. It's obsessive but, compulsive disorder. But see, people overgeneralize and use OCD as like, oh, I like yes. my room the way and it that is. That makes me and mad. That actually, I'm, I'm, like, I'm so OCD about my room. Yeah. It's like, no, you just want an organized room like you're a normal, a normal person. human being. Yes. Yeah. Unless you're a lazy ass, you know, right. then. Right. You know what and I mean? And in some cases, OCD people have a very disorganized room, actually. Yeah. Which I found that fascinating, by the way. Yeah. Um, some of them. Now, most of them are like absolutely spot this to the point where it's actually kind of weird, but like, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I'm just gonna name some compulsions because I don't want to go. Yeah, go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna grab something while you, so just keep talking. Yeah. So um, so some common compulsions are no, Jim, don't leave. I'm not leaving. <laughs> um, I'm just grabbing something on the other side of the room. 
So some common compulsions are washing and cleaning. So washing hands excessively or in a certain way. Um, excessive showering, bathing, toothbrushing, grooming, or toilet routines. Um, cleaning household items or other objects obsessively. Doing other things to prevent or remove contact with contaminants. Checking. And this is the one that I've done. Um, checking that you did not or went at home others. Checking that you did not went at home yourself. Checking that nothing terrible happened. Checking that you did not make a mistake or checking some parts of your physical condition or body. And and that's repeating. Sorry, what did you want to say? Well, I just wanted to mention like the repetitiveness of OCD is a. Uh, yes. I, I don't know why, but I, I do know. I seem to know a lot about OCD. Like I, I just it seems like I, I've done research on it before. Yeah. Oh, what the heck was that? That came about. Oh, Give scared me, me dude. <laughs> anyway. Um, Anyways, I was like, what just fell? I thought something was, like, breaking over here. Um, anyways, hopefully that didn't pick it up on the mic, but... No. Nah. Anyways, um, but yeah, I, I've done research on OCD before, and yeah. OCD is very repetitive-based kind of activity. You know, like, which so... Which we'll also discuss identity, but I also want to mention something else, too. Yeah. Which I'll mention that when we get to it. Yeah. I mean... It's almost to the point where it could pre- OCD can prevent you from, and I'm mind you, I'm not like a medical professional in the field of not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychiatrist yeah. or anything, but from what I understand, when you have OCD, it makes it very difficult for you to do anything, like go about yep. your daily yep. life, yep. because you get yep. stuck in almost like a, 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 loop. a loop. Yep, because yep. like. You'll be and excessively like, washing your hands over and, and if, over and, and over. Why? It's because they're thinking of some, probably some very dark stuff. Yeah, and they have to have some way to alleviate that. Or they're worried about germs when they've already washed their hand once. Yeah, and so it's fine. They're they're clean hands now, but apparently they feel that it's not clean enough. They got to keep washing it yeah. two, three times. And and I'll say this too. Yeah, and you've probably heard at least one story like this. They wash their hands so much they have like damage, like chapped hands, From dried. Stuff because yeah. that's like same thing with their backs if they shower a lot. Yeah. Well, yeah, and to think that like your water bill is going to be through the roof if yeah. you, if you have a water yep. bill. Yep. Um, we don't at my house since we have a well water, but you and know if, if you're living in the city, handle, your door handle might be broke because you do that so many times that it's like. Yeah, or like you're wiping down uh, objects all the time. You're you're got your Lysol wipes and you're you know going every your Clorox wipes or whatever. You're going around. You go. Yeah, you're very. You know everything's ritualistic. They were doing it. They were doing it before COVID was a thing, and I'm not doing that as a joke. I'm actually saying that. Right. The full package, like mask, gloves, which even we don't do. They wear gloves. Some of them, dude. I saw like. Speaking of the gloves and masking and all that, when I worked over at Giant Eagle, there was, this was kind of a funny story. Yeah. And I don't know. You can laugh at them, and I don't know if they were being dead serious or they actually were freaked out. Or if they may or like have OCD. they're just being funny. They maybe they had OCD. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to diagnose them, but it was funny though because these people wore a mask, okay, but then they wore a poncho over the rest of their body, and it was like you know. Dry and hot outside. They must be sweating their balls off. Yeah, I mean, like, dude, why are you wearing a poncho in the store? You look absolutely ridiculous. It looks like Kenny from South Park. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was like the, <laughs> and it was at the height of COVID too. So like, everyone's forced to wear a mask at the grocery store, which, yeah. you know, which is crazy. But people yeah, but really OCD went nuts like, with it. OCD people be like, you go late to the party. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's hard to tell. Like, the reason why I say it's hard to tell whether it's like OCD or or whatnot, is because a lot of people made fun of the whole masking thing. Yeah. Because what they do is, since they're like, oh, there's a mask mandate, I'm going to wear a, you know, a, a, like a scary Halloween mask. Like a has or a hazmat suit or something. Yeah, and they wear it at the store out of being like a joke because technically they're wearing a mask and it's covering their face. Yeah. So you don't you, you can't say like, oh, why aren't you wearing your N95? Yeah. Like, you know, because as a, a, a no. store clerk. No, but trust me, dude. They, yeah. with people with OCD, now I'm not going to diagnose anyone either, but from some stories I've heard, I've heard that they even have like a little belt 
on their jeans. I mean, not only do they have a mask and gloves, yeah, but they also even carry a bottle of Lysol on a belt with them. I believe it, and yeah. And they carry it everywhere they go, and they basically, if they get touched or something, they have to spray the air with, like, Lysol and stuff. It's that crazy with some people. Now you like, see, think about the mental, like, toll that that takes on people. Now, you see, I have, I guess... That's how you can tell if OCD... Guys, I guess if you want to see if someone has OCD, not look if they have a belt with Lysol on it. If they do, it's most likely OCD. Yeah. I mean, I'm... I mean, it's kind of a joke, but kind of not. Like, it's like if they're wearing a mask, you know that they're a leftist. <laughs> what? You know, right? Um, out at the grocery store, because if you're still wearing a mask, you're a loser. Right. <laughs> You've taken five booster uh, shots. Unless you have OCD. Yeah. Then it's like I can understand why. Yeah. Anyway. Is there um, anything else that you wanted to read? Just some of the mental stuff really quick. Okay. So putting things in order, arranging things until it feels right. Telling, asking, or confessing to get reassurance. Mm. Um, oh, avoiding, yeah, yeah. That that goes in with what we wanted to continue talking yeah. about here in a minute. Avoiding situations that might trigger your obsessions. Causes. I'll just go into this really quick. Research suggests that OCD involves problems with communication between the front part of the brain and deeper structures of the brain. These brain structures use a neurotransmitter called serotonin. Pictures of the brain at work also show that in some people, the brain circuits involved in OCD become more normal with either medications that affect serotonin levels, SSRIs, or cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm. And those are the two treatments for them. Yeah. Cognitive behavioral therapy and medication. Like, but that anything else. Some of oh, that's, that's it. it. Well, that's okay, it. so I guess before we end it out, um, I wanted to continue with... The identity part of it. The identity part of it, because there's a lot to be said with it. Yes. Um. You know, a lot of... You know, it's interesting to put this mental disorder with what we see a lot now with these I... orientation. No, I yeah. well, I knew that there had to be you some mental a, you disorder. Didn't have a name for it though. Yeah, there was no name for it. Like I didn't have a name for it, but now I can know that it's like, oh, that's might be that's, OCD. Might be yeah. OCD. Um, you know, a lot. Not everyone that has, which that, also means. The OCD can be a lot more widespread than we think it is. A lot more. Yeah, some of it, though, is it's fun to be to be a different gender. Right. So I yeah, can right. to be with a lot the, of it is like... With the crowd. And yeah, the, a lot yeah. of people want to yeah. be with the crowd. It's yep. the cool thing. Um, But some of it is actual, like, OCD, Thanks. you know, issues. You know, the, this is like, okay, this is one of the side effects of OCD. It's an obsession. Yeah. Um... And part of it to not like, all right. Well, how how do I word this? Okay, so some of it's keep in mind not we're an uncensored channel, Jared. So huh? keep in mind one uncensored channel. So no, I mean, this... as long as you're not cussing and you can speak your mind. I mean, well, no. What I'm I'm not gonna say anything bad, but what I'm saying is is that this is gonna hit on a more religious level here. Right. What I'm saying, right, is that a lot of these people that have these obsessions these identity obsessions with their sexual orientation or their gender identity have a lack of God in their life. Yes. Which is funny. Considering that one of the other ones, Jared is a religious obsession. Yeah. Feeling as if you offended God. So how does that work? Like, I don't know. Like the, like what? Like, I mean, OCD is different for everyone, I guess, but yeah, it manifests different ways. Right. But the thing is, it's it's this book yes. that they need to be reading. Yes. Not, yes. you know, like, oh, okay, you know, I have an obsession with, uh, you know, what are my friends identifying as, uh, as you know, what should I identify as? Who am you know? I, basically, is what they're, Cause they're so confused with. And the problem is... And I feel sad, because it's like, the problem if is, it is OCD... Yeah. If it is OCD, I cannot imagine the mental toll that that takes. Yeah, on someone, I feel like they're they're searching within. Yeah, you know, they're filling the hole that is the lack of God in their life. Yes, for um, with what the crowds the, doing. with with the crowds doing, and you know, and also the like the sexual let orientation. Me, hold on, let me pull up a list, Joe. Can I pull up a list really quick? Let's yeah, sure. Go ahead. Right. Okay, so... <clears throat> so go ahead. So, Romans 12-2, guys. 
ESV version. Okay. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Boom. Drop the ball on that one. Yep. What did it say? It said, do not be conformed to what? The ways of this world, the secular views, the one in defending with the crowd, the one in two, you know. That's not going to go really hard yeah. here to be gay because everyone else is doing it. And it's the cool thing. Yeah. yeah. But be transformed by the renewal of what? Your mind. Mental health. Your mind. Mental health. It's almost as if the Bible knows what to do. Yep. Like, seriously. And the thing is... And that goes into more of, like, the whole section about that and women's basically being a living sacrifice. But that it does apply here as well, though. Yeah. And it's it's definitely... I know people are like, well, you're just, you know, a Bible thumper or whatever. You know, but how else can you explain it? Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know. All these doctors and stuff, they want to find a cure for it, and it's like, you want to know the cure? Yeah, it's the word of God. Yeah. Not the word of... Man. Man. Yeah. Then and, and all these f- th- this fake stuff that these kids are following, and they think, oh, this is, you know... Because they're looking for a deeper connection, a deeper understanding of yep. the world, yep. but they're looking in the wrong places. Yep. And the only way to find that deeper understanding, that deeper meaning, is the Word of God and yes. reading the Bible. You know, going to church. Yes. And develop. Yeah. And, and the most important thing, developing the relationship with Jesus. Right. That's the most important thing. That means nothing if you don't. Right. Develop a relationship with Christ. Exactly. You can read all the Bible you want, but if you don't take it in and they'd be like, Jesus, I trust you, and I'm going to fall in love with you, then it means nothing. Yeah. Yeah. If I speak with human... El- so this is from 1 Corinthians, guys. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy but don't love, I am nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day... And if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor, I even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm making up without love. You have to fall in love with Jesus. Yeah. You can read all the Bible you want. You can sacrifice yourself like ISIS does and, you know, die as a martyr, whatever. Yeah. But if you don't fall in love with Jesus, it means nothing. Right. You have to develop that relationship with Christ if you, you know, want to fully be cured of any of your ailments, whether it be mental or physical. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, uh, you know, that's that's it's the only way. Yeah. And. Well, the only ways I can think of, as Phil Robinson says, you got a better story? Yeah. You got a better story. I would love to hear it. Well, I, you know, before we end out, I just wanted to end on the story here yeah. real quick. But, like, you know, I, I've, I, you know, I told you about the story about um, First of all, when are, I was are, you, are you comfortable with talking about this on air? Yeah. Okay. Well, otherwise, I, I wouldn't to, be bringing it okay. up. I wanted to make sure that you um, were. But, like, I told you about the story about me over at Kent state and like these, Oh, yeah, okay, they're okay. like, they're cool. like, I thought it was going to be something personal, like something deep. Okay. Well, Oh yeah. All the kinds, like all the pronouns. And yeah. Stuff like how they, the, uh, they introduce themselves yes, starting yes. with their name yep. and then their pronouns. Yep. yep. Well, another situation happened at Kent state and Victoria was in like a meeting or something with RAs or, or some other people. What? She works with. And, you know, she wasn't really in the conversation. She was just in the room, and yeah. the, she overheard them talking about how the Bible is a bunch of crap, and there's, you know, it's it means nothing. It's all a bunch of bullcrap, basically. Bullcrap is yeah. what they were saying. Yeah. And, uh, you know, 
they were saying like, "Oh, Victoria, uh, are you a Christian?" and and she said yes, and they immediately like shut up after that because yeah. they're like, "Oh crap, you know we're yeah. you know talking crap about your religion." And this is right in front someone of you. that's helped us probably. I would like to think. Well, a lot it, of that is see big on mental health and. Well, a lot of that proves what I was trying to say with the identity obsessions mm-hmm. is that a lot of these people and it's a lack of God. Trust me, there's a lot of them at Kent State, and I am outnumbered when I'm there. Yes, because I am outnumbered as a Christian, heterosexual male, <laughs> and a conservative, and a conservative. You got all the odds against you. All the odds man, against buddy. me over at Kent State. Yeah. Um. They're allowed to talk about... And pretty much every single university out there. Pretty much, yeah. Um, even Christian universities are... It's starting to be more... Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's like, this and that, is... And that scares me. It yeah. is, it's messed up, is what it is. But, you know, this proves my point that, you know, a lot of these people, they... Their religion is their identity. Yeah. Instead... Which is why I'll say this, and I've always yeah. said this, and this is... I mean, I don't know if this even relates, but atheism is a religion. I don't care what you say. Atheism is a religion. They follow it as if it is. Yeah, because they have their own beliefs and reasons for yeah. how the universe was made. Yeah. And they also have ways of countering, or they think they have ways of countering the word of God. Yeah. They it, don't. Which they don't. But, you know, they, they have ways to convince themselves that the Bible isn't, yeah. the, the word of God is not the way. Yeah. You know, Praying is not the way. Any any of that lifestyle. Tell is that to fake. the Bills people right now, the Buffalo Bills people. Tell that yeah. to them right now. Right. When something like that happens, what do you do? Explain that. Right. Yeah. Well, a lot of it too, and this isn't to say that they aren't actually praying, but you know, the it's like they they all act like they, you know pray and go to church on a regular Make basis it. like all these people that nope. all of a sudden decided you know what you know i feel bad for this guy which of course everyone feels bad and there should be prayers thoughts yes. and prayers going towards this this person and his family but just because they do that doesn't mean that they're like the best christians right you know that doesn't make you Romans also you know, says that not one person is good yeah. not one person is good we've all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of god yeah so even the best Christians still have sin in them. Right. You know, it's... If you even want to say, what does that even mean? Being the best... Like, what? The part that bothers me with that whole thing is that, you know, people are fine with, you know, saying negative things about God and and Christianity as a religion. But then when it comes to these events, when someone has a medical... What do you do? Oh, after 9-11. What do you do? You start praying. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you praying? It's, if if it's you don't a, believe it's, it. It's, it's in us. It's yeah. been with us since the dawn of time, and it'll always be with us. Yeah. They've just dumbed it down with either drugs, sex, alcohol, sexual identity. Yep. Debates. Mm-hmm. While the whole world is spinning on the top, we know where we stand. I'm going to stand right here on the solid ground. Yes. On God's green earth. Yes. And that's the thing. It's like, before we end here, we got to get going. But, yeah. um, you know, it's like, I, you know, we got to we gotta stick to our guns yes. with this. Literally and physically. Yeah. <laughs> and mentally. Mentally. I mean, you know, we have to stick to our beliefs. Yes. You know, whether that be... Not the beliefs, the truth. Well, yeah. Yeah. The, we got to stick to the truth. Yeah. That, that's a better way to put it. Um. But you know, like how people are like, well, how could you be? You're you're such a homophobe or whatever. And it's like, no, I'm actually not. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going. Christian. I'm I'm a Christian. I'm going with the truth. You know, and I I will stay here. You guys can live in your own delusion of, you know, you know. Which I wish you God's been dealing with. Yeah, which I I pray that they aren't like that and that they, you know, see the right way, but yeah. it's hard for these people to do that, to get out of this. They, they live in their own reality. Yeah. Like I mentioned before, you know, they think that, you know, the sexual orientation, gender identity, that that is that their religion. Them. That, that defines them. They believe that, Oh, this is actually how it is when, you know, like you and me, Aiden, we believe yeah. two genders. 
That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it is. There's, yeah. you know, the rest of it is delusions. Yeah. Yep. To put it frankly. Yep. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Why? You know, and people get offended by me. What was one of the um, obsessions? It's, in my mind, a form of a delusion. Yeah. I mean, you know, people get offended by me saying that, uh, you know, get offended by me saying that, you know, I don't believe in, I don't like the, you know, oh, what saying, uh, like drag queens, yeah, are are great and all this. I th- honestly, I think they're disgusting. It takes one look to be like, Ugh, not dating that. Yeah, and then some people are like, oh, I love watching it on TV, RuPaul's oh, Drag Race. Oh, like, I, I bet. Oh, I, oh, I bet you do. Yeah, like. And 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 some people are okay with you know children being uh, exposed to this stuff. Mm. An- another thing watch. that yeah. another fight that's worth fighting. Fighting, yeah. You know, and some people, you know, you got to pick and choose your battles. I don't mess but... with that, by the way. Yeah, that's all I'll say because I don't want to get my face red and punch something. But, mm-hmm. but you yeah. know, as there, I believe there's different types of. Of Christians, there's Christians that you know are like, well, you know, you do you. No, you actual know. Christians, and then they will lukewarm Christians the, who think that this stuff is okay. And if you're an actual Christian, you fight this. for this stuff. You yeah. fight against it. Yeah, you fight for your yep. your your truth and the truth. But you Je- also Jesus said, "I would rather be you hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'm spit you out of my mouth." Is what he says. Mm. Like, don't act like you love me, and then don't do what I tell you to do, what I command you to do. Yeah. It's that simple. Right. Well, I'm glad that we brought this back to a religious perspective. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like to do that towards the end. Yeah. Wrap it up too. in a religious bow. <laughs> re- in a religious <laughs> <Just> bow. bow. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, but this is a uh, good podcast tonight. Luke. Yeah, good. very good podcast. Very good talk. Um, yeah. so yeah. Uh, again, guys, if we you like to do subscribe. Do you subscribe? Yeah. Uh, no, but I, I seriously, um, praying for all you guys. Praying for love you guys. Like seriously. Yeah, love you guys, and thanks for watching us over the past year and and beyond that. But yeah. and we also have a lot of. Stuff Good coming stuff up. So we're coming excited, this year, yes. So. The next, this is a heavy topic, so keep in mind, we're going to unwind next week, guys. So we're going to do a little gaming video, unwind a little bit. Yeah, have some fun. Yeah. You know, it may, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to get back to this. Hopefully we won't have any technical issues. Yes. Um. So we'll just have to kind of play it by ear. And, yes. But, yeah, we'll let you guys know on our uh, gaming channel. Um, yes! On our... <laughs> On our uh, Facebook, we have a gaming channel Facebook page. Yeah. So we'll refer to you guys on there. So yeah, so we'll make announcements on there when we're going live and what game we're going live with. Boy, so we yeah. still got to figure that part out, like what yes. game we want to go live on with. The but drive home, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But hopefully, you guys uh, have a, a great week, and yes. we'll see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs>